Um, actually, Tayun, what Tayun, since you've actually done the work, why don't you kick it off and then you can hand it to me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so, hello everyone. My name is Tayun Chi. Uh, I'm from Georgia Tech, and my professor is uh, Professor Hua Wang. So. Uh, we will present a multimodality CMOS sensor for drug screening uh, this time. So Moise is uh, a new PhD student in our lab. So he will briefly express the introduction part, and then I will go through the circuit details and the live, intro uh, live demonstration. Thanks, Taiyun. So uh, just to kind of go into the introduction and motivation of our research project here. So basically, we are trying to create a CMOS sensor array for drug screening. So essentially, what makes our sensor unique is that it's multimodality, in that we're able to sense multiple parameters over the same cell sample in, in such a short amount of time that it becomes effectively simultaneous. So we have four essential modalities that we're trying to measure. The first is voltage recording, which is really useful if you wanted to do action potential measurements of neurons or cardiomyocytes, for example. Uh, another, a, a second key modality that we're after is impedance mapping, which is really useful if you wanted to check if a cell is attached to a particular surface. Um, really useful, for example, if you have a cancer drug and you're trying to test its efficacy in maintaining cell attachment to a particular extracellular matrix, or if you're trying to test if a cell um, if a cell either should remain attached to that matrix or should or should stay removed from that matrix. Like, you, for example, you don't want it to attach to a different part of the body for metastasis. Uh, the third key modality we're measuring is uh, optical shadow detection, which is really good if you want to uh, obtain a 2D spatial distribution of cells. And then the fourth modality we're after is thermal monitoring, which is really good if you want to check for uh, physiological temperature being maintained. So, for example, if you're at 37 degrees Celsius while this drug is being administered, if you wanted to check if if uh, you may get a potential immune response, right? You can say, okay, when I inject this drug, to what extent is the temperature changing? Is it changing to such a level where you could potentially induce fever, for example? So that's kind of the major motivation. Um, one key thing to add, uh, before I hand it off to Taiyun, who's going to talk ab more about the electrical design and the design footprint and kind of the measurement results, is the idea of why parallel monitoring uh, is really amenable to our array. Um, so a lot of the single modality sensors, one of the problems is that to measure the same cell sample, you have to put it on sensor A, and then you have to transfer it to another sensor B, and then you have to transfer it to another sensor C. So that makes it really vulnerable to contamination. So to avoid that problem, we essentially take the same cell sample, put it on the same pic set of pixels, i.e. the same pixel group, and in that pixel group, we're able to measure all of these modalities by essentially achieving dynamic switching between all four of these modes. So now I'm going to hand it off to Taiyun, who's going to talk more about kind of the specifics of each mode, uh, each modality, the circuitry behind it, and kind of the measurement results associated with it. So here you go. Okay, all right, cool. Okay, yeah. yeah thanks. All right, hang on, hang on, hang on. I got you. Oh. There you go. Oh, is that a tape? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> So, are we starting? So, uh, this slide basically shows our dye photo. We implement the CMOS sensor array in a 130 nanometer standard CMOS chip process. And then we have nine parallel pixel groups on this CMOS chip. Within each pixel group, we have 16 parallel pixels plus one temperature sensor. And within each pixel, we have one photodiode, which takes care of the uh, light intensity uh, detection or bioluminescence detection. We also have a gold plat plated uh, electrodes, which can measure the voltage recording signal and also the cellular impedance. So together, we can provide four orthogonal uh, modalities from the cells. 
Uh, this is the uh, analog front end circuits for the uh, pixels. Basically, we have several switches which can be configured for different measurement modes. For example, in the voltage recording mode, we have all these switches on except this guy. So the front amplifier is configured as a capacitor feedback amplifier with the reference signal. So it will amplify the voltage difference from the the electrodes which has the cells on top of it and we also have a reference electrodes which does not have the cells. Uh, on the same time, we can also configure the front end circuit as the voltage excitation. This voltage excitation will excite an uh, AC signal from the off chip, and we have a divide by two uh, circuits to generate this AC signal, which can measure the complex impedance of the cells. If we excite the voltage excitation on one electrode, for example, this one, and then we can measure the resulting current from the e electrodes beside it. So this circuit is configured as current sensing mode. Therefore, by measuring the current integrate on top of this capacitor, we can measure, uh, we can calculate back uh, what is the cellular impedance. And finally, we have an optical detection mode. In this case, uh, we have a source follower, and then we can integrate the photon current generated from this photodiodes. So uh, this is some, uh, we publish uh, this results in the ICC paper uh, 2015. So this is some published results. Basically, we can measure the uh, extra cellular voltage recording from human cardiac mouse sites. We, direct, we, direct, we directly culture the human cardiac mouse sites on top of the chip. So for this measurement, we culture the mouse neurons. And then this is the fluorescence image of the mouse neuron. And we first do uh, optical shadow image. Basically, you can think this is a low resolution CMOS camera. So basically, this one aligns well with the uh, fluorescence uh, Fluorescence image, but the optical shadow image cannot tell the information whether cells are attached to the surface or not. Therefore, we use the uh, we use the impedance mapping to check whether cells are attached to the surface or not, because cell attachments are really useful <coughs> in a lot of cell-based assays. So uh, now I will do uh, some simple demonstration about the uh, basically the optical shadow uh, image demo. So we have uh, our PCB boards, and then uh, we first use the conductive epoxy to put the, uh, to attach the CMOS die to the PCB board, and then we put a standard 35 millimeter cultured dish. We use a PDMS to seal the wire bonds and also uh, basically seal the dish on top of the uh, on top of the board. So for this optical shadow image, I will put this black box basically to remove the, uh, the scattering light and then the, vo the, current ex uh, the light excitation is applied on the top. Uh, we have designed a uh, lab view. So the lab view code will automatically sweep uh, among all the pixels and then we measure basically the photon current generated from the photodiodes. So uh, now I just click, so you see there are some voltage difference. That means uh, across all the pixels, some of the pixels has uh, higher, basically, uh, integration current. If, if the current is higher, that means probably the cells are not attached to that photodiode because cells are not transparent, so they're supposed to block uh, some of the light intensity. And then after the sweeping is done, we have a MATLAB code to post-process the, the data. Basically, we do a correlated sam a double sampling. We use the data at the beginning of the reset signal minus the data at the end of the reset signal. And then uh, we take the, diff the voltage difference, and then we plot the, uh, the photodiode image across the CMOS sensor chip. Yeah, so this is uh, on, on my demo. Yeah, cool.